you have found in cannabis lab testing? Okay, I found a lot of flaws. Um, <clears throat> let me start off by saying I'm a big supporter of testing. Me too. Yeah, it's really important to test your medicine. That said, what I'm about to describe is going to discourage anybody who <laughs> is testing medicine, and I'm conflicted about this, but it, you know, it's, it's just where we are right now, so we need to be honest about it. So first of all, when you're testing a bag of flowers, you're already kind of beating your head against the wall because the, within a single bud, you might have a higher cannabinoid content at the top than you do on the inside. Mm -hmm. And it's, you know, it's, it's, it's a really imprecise way of measuring anything. So the, the first thing I always suggest is make it into a concentrate. So if you have a bag of flowers, suspend the oils into ethanol and then have that ethanol tested because at least then you've achieved a homogenous sample. Mm -hmm. Now, very often the laboratories are, are totally imprecise and particularly if they're offering something they call a potency test. Now a potency test is typically a lot cheaper and it's intended for people trying to get a rough guesstimate on how much THC is in the flower. And that, you know, it's not completely useless, especially if that's all you're looking for. But if you're the parent of a special needs child and you're trying to calculate ratios, mm -hmm. it's not that helpful because it's only accurate to one or two percentiles. And let me, let me give you an example. If, if say a plant has 1% THC and 15% CBD, that, that's, a, that's a 15 to one ratio. Now, if that plant actually has 0.5% THC and the same thing, 15% CBD, that's a 30 to one ratio. So in, when you're looking at ratio, that's a dramatic difference. That's the difference between 15 to one and 30 to one. In terms of the actual analysis, that's an only a 0.5 percentile distinction. And most potency tests are only accurate to one or two percentiles. So you can have a much larger discrepancy than that. And it's just a question of the margin of error for the test. Most labs don't even want to assert that they're accurate enough to do a good ratio test like that. And if you simply question the laboratory technician about their level of accuracy, they're going to be honest about that. Now, some of them are not honest about that. Some of them are not even aware that they're dealing with that margin of error. But most laboratories are simply not qualified to do that level of accuracy and, they're, and they consistently get it wrong. It's, you know, it's really easy for the same plant sample to come back as a four to one or a 40 to one based entirely on the laboratory technicians error in inserting the sample, let alone the machines being used and how well calibrated they are. So there, that's a big problem in and of itself. There's also problems, frankly, with honesty. Now, if, if you put yourself in the perspective of a grower and say you've grown, a, you know, a room full of one varietal, you, and, you, and you want to sell that to a dispensary. One of the ways that you can get top dollar for it is by going and getting it tested first to show that it's you know, free of mold, free of pesticides, free of whatever. Mm -hmm. You're not bringing in your entire harvest for them to test. You're bringing in a small sample. Now, just thinking realistically, if you know part of your harvest had a mold problem and you were trying to beat it back and whatnot, you are not going to bring in a sample that you know to contain mold. You're just not. And so the, when someone presents a test to a dispensary or to a patient that say, you know, says mold free, that does not mean that the entirety of the harvest is mold free. It means the sample they chose to provide the lab is mold free. Now, unfortunately, it doesn't even mean that because the, when, you, when the lab is doing that analysis, Typically mold, they're not even, it's not even the, the gas chromatograph or the high pressure liquid chromatograph that they're testing with. They're just looking at it under a microscope and detect, seeing if they see any mold spores. Now, that's not a terrible way of looking for mold, but it's, it, you know, they can get it wrong. And depending on the training of the technician and the, you know, how many samples they were looking at that day, how carefully they were looking at it, they could just miss it. Now, the same is true with pesticides. Now, th this is deeply concerning to me because very often, you know, in marketing these tests, they assert like we tested for pesticides, like that's all this one thing. And the truth is there's hundreds of different pesticides mm -hmm. and there's new ones coming out all the time that, you know, very often we don't even know what they are. And so to assert that this is tested free of pesticides is ridiculous. You can't really know that. You can check for some of the more common ones. And, you know, some labs do that, some labs don't, some labs are just guessing. 
I, I've done experiments where I like literally sprayed RAID into testing samples and brought it to labs just to see, and it's disgusting how often they just completely miss pesticides. So, you know, I, it's really important to know if a plant material has pesticides. I encourage people getting that tested, but I feel like that can very easily create a false sense of security. And, you know, the, the only real way to know is to either, you know, have a real relationship of trust with your grower or grow it yourself yeah. even better. And that, you know, that's really what this comes down to. Yeah. I know when I worked at a lab, we offered a pesticide test. Um, I don't know exactly what we tested for. It was uh, extra money, but no one would ever test. Like, no one be like, oh, I don't need that. And I'm oh. like, okay. and yeah, <laughs> totally. And even, you know, even again, it's the same thing as with the mold. Even if you do bring it in and gets mm -hmm. tested, like you could just not spray one nug, spray the rest of your garden and then bring that nug in to get tested and call it good, you know? And for that matter, when you bring in a bag of cannabis to sell to either a patient or a dispensary and you have a test to go along with that, there is no reason to believe that that test has any relationship to do with that sample. Like uh, very often people will be growing a varietal and they'll pay to have it tested once. Yeah. And, and then they use that every time they sell the and bag. And they pick their tap nug. <laughs> yeah, totally. And like, and even, I mean, in terms of where the nug is in the yeah. bag, oh, like, yeah. you know, keef is the trichomes breaking mm -hmm. off and that, you know, obviously just gathers at the bottom. So simply pulling a nug out of the bottom of the bag is going to have a much higher cannabinoid content than if it was at the top because it's been keef. It's been banging around with all the keef. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a really big problem. And I, you know, I almost hate to voice all these concerns because I know people are going to hear all this and be like, so why am I spending a hundred dollars on a test that doesn't even mean anything? And it's, the, it's still important and we need to demand much higher standards yeah. of these laboratories. And it, you know, in order for this to be credible medicine, it does need to be tested. It's just, you know, where we are as an industry is still in its infancy yeah. and, it, and it's deeply concerning. So just demand. Yeah. And you know, and also there's something called a ring test that I, you know, I encourage everyone to do. So if you're, if you're having, if you're doing a test, don't just bring it to one lab, bring it, you know, first make a homogenous sample and bring it to a bunch of different laboratories and see if you get the same result. If you get, if there's certain labs that are total outliers and give you completely mm -hmm. different results, you know, and then also bring the same sample, you know, make sure it's a homogenous sample, but bring the same sample to the same laboratory at different dates. And, you know, ideally send somebody else in with the same sample. And if they're not even internally consistent, that tells you everything you need to know about that awesome. laboratory. Cool. Good info. Yeah, thank you. <laughs>